Today, we're gonna to learn how to read digital inputs using an Arduino Uno and build a circuit to include push button control. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what a momentary push button is. This is a type of switch that can open or close a circuit across two connected sides. You'll see that there are four legs on the button. The two legs next to each other on either side are not normally electrically connected, while the legs directly opposite of the button are connected. When the button is pressed, all four legs become electrically connected. It can be difficult to know which leg is connected to what with just a quick glance. An easy way to ensure you always connect your circuit appropriately is to do so using two legs that are on opposite sides of the button at an angle to one another. For building our circuit, we'll use the same circuit we built in the digital output video. You see that the anode of the LED is connected to pin 6 and the cathode is connected to the ground bus via a 220 ohm resistor. Before we start to add the button portion of the circuit, we need to connect the positive 5 volt rail of the Arduino Uno to the positive bus of the breadboard. It's usually a good idea to place the button across the center of the breadboard. On one side, we'll connect one leg of the button to pin 8, and on the other side of the button, we'll connect a leg to the ground bus. We'll also want to add a 10 kilo ohms resistor between the leg connected to pin 8 and the positive 5 volt rail. This will act as a pull-up resistor. This weak pull-up resistor will ensure that we know what the state of pin 8 is when the button is not pressed. Now for coding in our setup function, we first set the mode of pin 6 to be an output. Then we set the mode of pin 8 as an input. Now we don't technically need to do this as all Arduino pins initialize as inputs automatically, but it doesn't hurt to explicitly state this in our code. It's a good practice to initialize an output pin in the setup with a known state. This will ensure we know what the pin is doing at the time of startup. To determine whether pin 8 is high or low, we simply need to use the digital read function and identify the pin we want to read from. Since our button has two possible states, either open or closed, we'll need a conditional statement like if else to determine what action to take based on the provided input. Here we're stating that if pin 8 is equal to low, meaning the button is pressed and is pulled to ground, then we want to set pin 6 to high turning on the LED. However, if pin 8 is not equal to low, meaning the button is not pressed and pulled high, then we want pin 6 to be low turning off the LED. So now if we compile and upload our code to the Arduino, we can use the button to control the LED. One of the nice features our microcontroller has is a built-in pull-up resistor. We'll be able to use this internal pull-up resistor to replace the external resistor and streamline our hardware. The value of the internal pull-up resistor is defined in the data sheet as 20 to 50 kilo ohms. Removing the external pull-up resistor and using the internal resistor won't have a significant impact on our code, but we do need to change one of our initialization values in the setup function where we specify pin 8 as an input, we need to change the mode from input to input pull up. Now when the pin is initialized, it will have the internal pull up resistor enabled. After making the changes to the circuit and uploading our code, we see that we haven't altered the functionality at all, but we did cut back on the amount of hardware we need to do the same thing. In this video, we built a circuit that allowed us to provide a digital input to the Arduino and view the output via an LED. We also used a conditional statement, if else, to control the logic portion of our code. Like digital write, digital read is a fundamental tool that we'll use over and over in our future projects. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my other Arduino tutorials. Until then, thanks for watching.